truly innovative car design, I think, is a bit thin on the ground these days. There's a lot of manufacturers that are just phoning it in. But I've come to Paris to look at a car, a new car, that's the revamped version of this. They say it's not a retro as such, but what it is, is it is a car that has loads of aspects of the Renault 5, the car that's now over 50 years old, and it promises to bring it right into the 2024, 2025 era that's fully electric, it's practical, it's exciting, it's colorful, and it's bloody charismatic. And I'm gonna see the finished version that's actually just started to go into production quietly, and it's behind this wall. Oh, like and subscribe. Five, here it is. The all new, eagerly anticipated revamp of the Renault 5, the R5 by Renault. And in this episode, I'm gonna tell you everything that we've just been told about the production ready. And that's what this is, production ready R5. I'm Johnny Smith. You're watching The Late Break Show, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. So where does the R5 sit in Renault's lineup? Well, let's have a quick refresher. The Megane E-Tech, which is a fantastic electric car actually, which I reviewed, that's there already. The Megane Scenic has just gone on sale, E-Tech. That car I'm gonna hopefully review soon. The Zoe, which is an electric car that's been in production for many years, in fact, might be 10 years. That car is about to be retired because this car will effectively replace that, but, this doesn't actually use any of the parts associated with Zoe, which is what I presumed was going to be the case. This is an all new platform, an all new platform, different suspension system at the back, especially, uh, and of course, a different size. Size wise, before I talk too much further, this sits size wise between the Twingo and the Clio, according to Renault, and I'll put the dimensions above my head of how it differs from those two cars. Now, Renault knew that the original Renault 5 had a characterful, recognizable face that children liked, adults liked, and they sold it in a number of funky colors. So Renault are gonna do this again. This has a distinctive face, and I love that about it, and I love the fact they're gonna sell it with some decent colors, six different colors, of which this is probably my favorite. The front end here, because it's electric, it doesn't need a normal grill. Renault's got this new badge, which it's had now for a couple of years, and I actually think it's really, really quite slick. I like it a lot. Within this eye, within the headlights, there's another little moniker, which is similar to this down here. And Renault says that this here mimics the fog lights of the Renault 5 GT Turbo, which is the last iteration of the Renault 5. This has a water-cooled battery pack, which we'll talk more about in a minute, because it's low center of gravity. It's in the middle of the car, between the wheels, as you expect. And there'll be some active air flaps down here somewhere that will force air or cut air off accordingly. There is no frunk fruit. There's no storage underneath there. This is a front-wheel drive car, only going to be available, as far as we know, in front-wheel drive form. Uh, so that is what is under there. Talking of which, there's three different power outlays, outputs of the R5. Same motor, and apparently it's a smaller version of the motor that's in the Megane. The Zoe had a Continental motor. This is a Renault-designed, Renault-built motor. And to that end, there's a bit of a sustainability story on the R5, but they're saying that not only is this going to be completely made in France, but all the parts that it requires will be procured from something like a 300 kilometer radius of the factory. And the factory is the same factory that made the Zoe's. And there's a, as I speak, there's a crossover in Zoe production winding down and R5 production winding up or starting up, spooling up. One other thing I must mention about the frontal design is this. 
this here, it's off center. And in the original Renault 5, this was a louvered grill, okay, for uh, allowing heat from the engine to disperse. But they've taken it as a design feature so that when you're charging and the charging port on the R5 is here for all the models, it's gonna be on this side. So that's driver's side in Europe and in our country in the UK, it'll be passenger side. And it's a charging status bar. So it says five, it's got some lines in it. These will light up accordingly to give you a quick visual reference of the charging status. I, I like it. I think it's really, really cool. It doesn't feel too forced and it's actually raised off the bonnet. So it's almost like a off center power bulge. So charging times. The first thing I would say before that is that it's gonna launch with two different battery packs. Take note Honda, because this is what you could have done with a Honda E. So the five is gonna be available with a 40 kilowatt hour battery, which does up to 300 kilometers of range, WLTP, or, and that's called the city range, or the comfort range for beyond city work, which is a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, will do up to 400 miles, so 250 mile range. The Renault 5, as standard, has a heat pump. Yes, really good for colder climates, like the UK, makes most efficient uh, use out of that battery. It has an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, which was optional in the Zoe from memory. It can do 80 to 100 kilowatts DC rapid charge, depending on whether you go for that small battery pack or the bigger battery pack as well. It can also tow up to 500 kilos, which is pretty damn good. So that is your charger. Now I said, why isn't it in the nose like the Zoe was? And they said it's because they wanted to get that profile that slightly retro profile nose and it wasn't possible otherwise. Now, while you're at this angle, you can probably see this crease and these sort of shoulders, there's a crease that goes down and then goes along the door and then goes up and over. So it has these little slightly boxy arches like the Renault 5 Turbo. But this isn't the hot hatch, they say. It's fun to drive and it's frisky but it's not like mad. In fact, you can get a, I think it's a 70, a 90 or 110 kilowatt state of tune out of that motor. The motor stays the same, but the software's changed. Uh, and the top spec car is 150 horsepower equivalent. All R5s are five door. So in the original 50 year old Renault 5, you could pick a three door or a five door. These are five door and similar to the Honda E and many others, you've got a fairly concealed handle for access. But what I really like about it is it's, it's 1.5 meters high. It's not, a, it's not a tall car at all. And it hides that battery pack that sits down in the belly in that bespoke new EV platform, which I've totally forgotten the name of. It's the AMPR small. But anyway, all you need to know is that basically it's not shared with any other car. They're gonna make more EVs using this floor pan. And while you're in profile, Look at how far out each wheel is pushed. This has a big old wheelbase for the overall length with hardly any overhangs whatsoever. According to Renault, every single five is going to have 18 inch wheels. There's three different versions of wheels. You can get a steel wheel with a hubcap, which is quite retro, that's entry level. Then you get this one, which is called the Techno. And this is a sort of aero alloy wheel. And then you've got a Chrono, which is like a 10, I think a 10 spoke, almost looks like a, an analog clock. I actually think that these are the coolest of the alloys, but I do like the hubcaps. Tires wise, they all come on the same size tire. A nice profile actually, nice, not too low a profile. 195, 55, 18, Conti Eco Contact 60. Now, when it comes to needing new tires for your car, be your car an electric car or otherwise, go to blackcircles.com. Head to the Black Circles website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tyres for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circles click and fit service, with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. Now moving around to the back of the R5, I love the fact that the two-tone roof is really set off by this kind of satin red line. And Renault says they took the design cue of that from two things. The actual red line on the Turbo 2, so the, 
the big wide-bodied mid-engine thing in the intro that you saw me walk past but also the original 70s Renault 5 had a chrome strip on the gutter because old cars have rain gutters. And this goes into a subtle roof spoiler here. And then you've got the back. I mean, the back is so close to the concept. I absolutely love these rear light clusters. I thought they were all smoothed in originally, but now when I touch them and I look at them, it's actually completely 3D. Completely 3D, but the back end is very, very flushed with, hallelujah, an actual wiper blade. And they've really gone to town on the five being a, uh, a distinctive kind of design piece on it. And that back window is just, it just sits on there. It almost just looks like it's kind of floating. It's brilliant. Now, I'm, I really think this is Renault's moment when, akin to when Mini launched the one in 2001. And maybe when Fiat launched the 500, which remains Fiat's like cash cow car, really. I really think this could be Renault's moment because not only is this car interesting and not only is it being launched in fantastic colors like this green, it's actually keenly priced. You know, they're saying 25,000 euros starting price, which is 22,000 pounds at the time of, of this. That's actually really keenly priced for what is a car that can do up to 250 miles range that's electric, that's all new, that's got multi-link rear suspension, which you probably can't see now, but there is, a, there is another cutaway of a car in another studio nearby. The dark gray parts of the metalwork, front suspension turret, stuff like that, the dark gray means it's shared with Clio and Capture models. Same as the crash bar here behind the steering column. So that's all kind of generic Renault but there's not a lot of it. Everything else is new. It's a steel car. Like I say, it's under 1,450 kilos. Batteries in the middle. Wheelbase is really as big as possible with no overhangs. But the real interesting part, I think, of the Renault 5 is the fully independent multi-link rear suspension here. Because you don't often see this on a B-segment car. It's normally in more expensive, bigger segment cars like C-segment. And that means this is promising to handle really well, but also maybe leaves the door wide open for a twin-engined version or twin-motored version. Speaking of twin-engined, if you've not watched my video where I drive an original Citroen 2CV 4x4, that is probably the only factory production car that you could ever buy which had two full engines. Watch it if you haven't already. It's lovely. It was one of my favourite days of 2024, three. I can't actually remember when I filmed it boot. It's a very important point. This is a class leading boot size. Now when you think about the Honda E, a car that I'm very fond of but is, is flawed in two key areas. Honda E's boot is, is awful and also the Honda E only comes in one battery size as I've said before which is a, is a shame that they haven't offered it with two battery sizes. This and the Fiat 500 E have two battery sizes and the boot of this 326 litres and there's even underneath the boot floor immediately at the back here it looks like half a spare wheel well but it's an extra 27 litres apparently for cable storage and maybe muddy shoes. I think that is a good size boot considering the size of the car and its competitors. 60-40 split on the back seats and talking of back seats the interior of this thing is really special really special. I mean that looks just like the 80s Renault 5 to me. Looks brilliant doesn't it? And there's a Renault 4 coming, a new Renault 4. That's going to be interesting. Oh I forgot to say that the electric motor that this runs on doesn't use any rare earth materials, it doesn't uh, have any magnets so it uses less materials in that respect. The other thing I want to mention is this cool little decal here again makes a real thing of the number five. They are really going for it with the graphics and I like that. And lastly, I forgot to mention here, the Renault 5 comes with two things as standard, vehicle to load and vehicle to grid. What do they mean? Vehicle to load means you can plug this in and power stuff off it like a hairdryer or a vacuum cleaner or you know an electric barbecue or go camping so it uses the battery as a source. Vehicle to grid means you plug the car in and you can effectively power your house or using the right wall box and the right app, you can sell power back to the grid at peak time and then you can recharge the car off peak time. And there are apps that will help you to decide whether that's a good idea or whether it isn't. But it's a first for Renault.
The R5 weighs less than 1,450 kilos, and that was really important that it didn't feel too bloaty. The other thing that's pretty mad that I've just heard is Jean-Michel Jarre, one of the most French people in the world, <laughs> was involved in the graphics and the sound design of the welcome sequence in the car. And Jean-Michel Jarre also designed the sound for the, the pedestrian awareness under 30 kilometers that the car has to make that's mandatory. Anyway, come on in, the cabin's awesome. Now, according to Renault, this car is gonna be made from 85% recyclable materials with 22% coming from a circular economy, including 41 kilos of recycled polymers. There is a big sustainability, like with a lot of manufacturers, there's a big sustainability story with everything. And that includes this. This looks like denim, but when is denim not denim? Well, when it's made from 100% recycled plastic bottles, that's when, and that's what this is. The shape of these seats, they look really sporty, but they've been designed to be comfortable. And the shape of them apparently has been inspired by the original Renault 5 Turbo, which has an unbelievably cool interior, it must be said. Now, sitting in here, the first main things you're greeted by are, yes, it does have a centre console. It has wireless charging and it has a couple of cup holders. And, you know, the plastic, I think they've got little tiny diamonds in the plastic, but the plastic doesn't feel particularly amazing but I do love the fabric. And then you realize there's a basket here on the side, and this is one of the quirky options. This is a wicker basket. This is a baguette carrier. I kid you not. Again, one of the most French things. You're mentioning Jean-Michel Jarre and baguette in the same paragraph. It's very French. That's what that is. The screen and the center console here are actually angled towards the driver. And this is a, what is it? A 10 inch multimedia touchscreen, which it uses an, a Google interface, which I'm really pleased about because Google works exceptionally well. There's even a character, a little infographic character avatar, if you will, called Reno that's been introduced. It's all new. And apparently Reno is really helpful, although I don't have great history with those sorts of voice commands, but rest assured, it's there if you want it. Those little lit, almost camera viewfinder front DRL monikers, they're hinted here as well on the edge of the two outlets. And if you remember the old school original Renault 5 from the 70s, it had this big dash pad that's kind of quilted in vinyl, I think it was, and they've mimicked that here on the Renault 5. And this part here, I believe, also lights up. I think the dash is actually pretty cool, although the lighter coloured interiors do look even more funky. And if I was buying one, I'd definitely go for the lighter coloured ones with celebrating all these interesting fabrics. This car is 100% leather free. Apparently the interior of the R5 has a patented smart cocoon soundproofing and acoustic windscreen. Well, maybe the soundproofing has something to do with the headlining. This headlining is very unique. So the original Renault 5 had diamond embossing like the diamond badge, Renault badge. But look at this, look at this. So the little drive stalk that selects, you know, reverse, park, etc., is shaped like a lipstick, a traditional lipstick with the Renault logo in the end. The steering wheel is not entirely circular, I don't think, although I can't quite tell. And there's a bit of piano black plastic going on. And I'm pretty sure this switch gear has been carried over from the Zoe, but I, I, I ran a Zoe as a long-term test car and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I'll put a link on screen for that if you haven't watched it before. And they haven't gone with loads of touchscreen stuff. There is the touchscreen, obviously. And one good thing about the Google, using the Google interface, is the fact that it has a journey planner for, for electric cars. And apparently that's very, very efficient and it gets updated quickly. And those are really the challenges that non-Tesla manufacturers face, making sure that it's as easy as possible to do a journey, to charge on the hoof, and you've got all of that set in the car. Now, out of pure curiosity, I wanted to pop the bonnet and have a quick look because the Renault 5 does use the steering rack and it uses the, the front suspension and inner wing structure of the Capture and the Clio. The trick rear suspension is, is bespoke to the car, apparently. You can see the water bubbling in this coolant here because obviously it has a water-cooled system and it uses all of that cleverly, like it does to be able to heat the cabin, take heat away from the motor down there, but it obviously doesn't have any storage under here. The bonnet actually weighs quite a lot. It feels really quite substantial, which is a bit of a surprise for me, actually. There's one other thing. When I looked at the corner of this headlight, there's the French flag 
right in the corner, just there, which is very neat. And suitably patriotic, given that the car, I think the modules, the motor, all of it seems to be made in France. And talking of the uh, modules, three modules for the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, four modules for the um, 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, and they're made by NMC. This has ADAS, which is various safety systems that Renault use. So it, it actually has, you know, adaptive cruise control, steering assist, for a lane keep assist, but it also can actually handle uh, self-parking. You can park the car, so, although I don't really care about self-parking because it's a small car with a really good turning circle that's fit for city use, like Paris, which is very timely, given that Paris is trying to outlaw big, heavy cars like SUVs. This is surely born for Parisian life. In fact, the original Renault 5, remember, was one of the first cars to have plastic bumpers that were sacrificial, really. I've noticed a few cocks on the Renault 5. There's one etched in the glass here. There's one in the tailgate over there. I don't really know the meaning. I think it's to do with proud French production, but apparently they're also on the Megane E-Tech. But when I reviewed that car, I didn't notice the cocks. Sorry. We've managed to squeeze a little bit more time to film before they close up and I wanted to look at the yellow car, especially from the inside because the yellow fabric in here is absolutely stunning. Come and have a look. So out of the five colours that are available, I think the yellow here and the green over there, like the 70s colours, they're the ones that really pop and they look fantastic. But it's this interior. I've actually got a footstool at home, a retro footstool that's similar to this kind of mottled fabric and again, this fabric is completely made from recycled fibers. And that shape of the seat, you can see even better in the light fabric. It mimics the H kind of pattern and that headrest of the original Renault 5 mid-engine turbo. So in the back here, again, you can see this five kind of logo that's really prominent. This is a five seat car, five door, as I said. Unfortunately, I can't sit behind myself it's too tight. It's a flat floor car because it's an EV bespoke platform. If I was sitting behind myself, if I was a child, I'd probably be okay, but I need a bit more leg room. I can't fit my feet under the seat, so it's probably not the greatest actually for a tall adult like me to be sat in the back of the R5. But nevertheless, there are three seats here and for kids and people like that and maybe short journeys or sitting behind someone who's short, probably be okay. In terms of rivals, I mean, probably the biggest rival is the electric Mini, which I featured just before the world spiralled out of control with the pandemic. And I think that's a really cool car. And then you've got the Fiat 500e, which I also think is really good because it launched with two different battery pack sizes for the consumer to choose. And that's what they've done with the Renault 5. And I'm really looking forward to how, seeing how it feels with this multi-link rear suspension, which leaves the door wide open for a twin motor version perhaps, which could be an RS Renault Sport badge thing, who knows? I'm excited. I really am excited about what this is gonna drive like, and I'm excited for Renault because this is a new era for them, not just bringing back an iconic name and using elements of it, but also building on that electric background, which it's actually become really accomplished at with things like the Zoe that we've seen over the years and the Megane and the Scenic. So this is a bold new era for Renault. And the price at which they're gonna sell this car means it's extremely competitive and that addresses a lot of people's grumbles about, oh, I'd quite like an EV, but they're too much money. Well, this is actually is probably keen as it's gonna get. And then the range, there's two ranges to choose from and it's giving you that from the launch with things like a heat pump, which in countries like ours in the winter, you really need to get the most efficiency out of your electric car. What do you think? about the new R5, I'd love to know. And if you're watching this the day that this video drops, I'm pretty sure the order book's open for an extra 150 pounds or something. You can be towards the front of the queue to order one of these. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. And if you haven't watched my other electric car videos, I will put a list for my playlist on The Late Break Show for all the new electric car reviews. Cheers.